my other colleague from California, um, the chairman of the committee, um, Mr. Sherman. And Mr. Chairman, you're surrounded by Californians. I, I uh, there is no more fortunate Robach, position to be in. Well, I'm afraid I'm Watson. A, we're, we're from the left coast. Yes. Uh, in any case, I'm a little less enthusiastic about repealing Jackson Vanig uh, or failing to apply it in the manner that has prevented Russia from joining the WTO. Uh, that doesn't mean I couldn't reach that conclusion. It's just I, I lack the bubbling enthusiasm of some of my colleagues. <laughs> I do not think that we have seen a real reset in our relationship with Russia. It is true that in uh, supplying Afghanistan, we can fly over their airspace, but we have air bases in uh, newly independent uh, former Soviet republics which uh, are critical to dealing with Afghanistan and which Russia tries to undermine and expel at every turn. And while Russia may eventually reluctantly agree to some sort of sanctions on Iran uh, at the United Nations, uh, you can be sure that they will be so tiny as to have no meaningful effect on Iran's economy, let alone any meaningful possibility of causing Iran to change its nuclear policy. Um, we uh, entered into the start, uh, where we've concluded the start negotiations. Doing so was perhaps good for the world. It also was a chance for Russia to stand side by side with the United States as co-equal world superpowers, a uh, honor that uh, they don't enjoy uh, near as often uh, as they did before the fall of the Soviet Union. Now. I believe that the only way we can really improve Russia's behavior is by offering concessions and obtain on things that Russia really cares about. Jackson Vanek is just one of the many things that we could offer. Now, uh, I'm a man of faith, uh, but I do not believe in a faith-based foreign policy. Uh, when it comes to making concessions to Russia, whether it be Jackson Vanig or anything else, uh, we should uh, trust but verify. Uh, more particularly, we should get explicit, sometimes private, but at least explicit, clear agreements for meaningful steps uh, taken by Russia in return for the steps taken by the United States. Now, high-level Russian diplomats have repeatedly requested a chain a, 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 that we, quote, graduate or them from Jackson Vanek or eliminate uh, Jackson Vanek. Whichever device is used would be the same for Russia. Uh, they have described it as uh, notorious uh, in the Russian press. Uh, Boris, Yel Boris Yeltsin once joked uh, that every kid in Russia uh, knows the names of Jackson and Vanek, and uh, none, of, none of them uh, particularly like either gentleman. Um, this uh, Jackson Vanek uh, modification is critical to Russia joining the World Trade Organization. Their efforts have been greatly complicated by the fact that we do not have permanent and unconditional normal trade relations or most favored nation uh, status uh, with them, and that is as a result of Jackson Vanek. Both President uh, Putin and uh, President uh, Medvedev uh, have uh, argued in favor of their country uh, joining the World Trade Organization, acknowledging that their country's inability to join the WTO has stunted Ru the Russian economy and made it less competitive. According to the Congressional Research Service, the change uh, the United States uh, would experience from Russia's graduation uh, in terms of our trading relationship would be minimal. Russian imports have entered the United States on a uh, constantly renewed normal trade relations basis uh, since 1992. So this is not primarily a balance of pay, uh, payments issue or even a jobs issue. This is a foreign policy issue. Now I have often said that I would like to see a grand bargain with Russia in which we would uh, uh, tender concessions not only on Jackson Vanek, but on other issues of importance to Russia, that we would uh, listen carefully uh, and perhaps modify our positions with regard to such issues as Abkhazia, South Ossetia, and Transnistria Moldova. Uh, but this 
major grand bargain would have to be in return for truly crippling, immediate, mandatory United Nations sanctions on Iran. The State Department isn't even talking about such sanctions, and so it seems unlikely that our State Department is going to negotiate a grand bargain wor worthy of the title. Uh, Uh, preventing Iran from developing nuclear weapons should be our number one foreign policy objective. Uh, I do not expect Russia to uh, massively um, change its policy toward Iran just on the Jackson Vanek issue alone, and I don't think that um, uh, it's uh, credible for us to say that the only thing we're willing to change is Jackson Vanek, and we're waiting for Russia uh, to. Uh, uh, vote for uh, massive and crippling sanctions uh, on Iran. So our purpose here at these hearings is to focus on Jackson Vanek as perhaps the sole immediate concession that we are willing to offer the Russian side. Uh, if we do so, we, uh, as others have noted, uh, it can be said that Moscow is in compliance with the purpose of Jackson Vanek, which was to allow a uh, chiefly uh, Soviet Jews, to emigrate. But while the Jews of the Soviet Union are no longer being held hostage, their sacred papers are. And this is clearly uh, something that needs to be dealt with before uh, we change Jackson Vanek. I refer to the Shearson collection of books and archives, which are sacred uh, chiefly uh, to uh, those Jews in the Chabad or Lubavitcher movement. Um, I, uh, without objection, will put into the record the many letters that I have uh, uh, sent to, to uh, such Russian leaders as uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, which I have hand-delivered uh, at the Russian embassy to the ambassador, which I have handed to virtually every Russian dignitary who has come to the United States and visited Capitol Hill since uh, 2004. And when I didn't personally hand these letters to them, my good friend Dana Rohrbacher did. Um, I want to note also for the record that I've never received a response. Uh, I did hear a third hand a rumor that the Russian response would, after six years, be that they seem to have some procedural defenses usable in both Russian and perhaps even American courts, but not a single word has been under uttered as to why, as a matter of justice, uh, the, the uh, Russian state should retain these documents sacred uh, to the Chabad uh, movement. Um, in particular, the Shearson uh, collection of papers can be divided between the Shearson archives and the Shearson library. Let me focus uh, chiefly uh, for uh, uh, today on the archives. These were legally removed from the Soviet Union in the 1920s by Rabbi Shearson. They were seized by the Nazis and then fell into the hands of uh, the Red Army. It is well established that assets seized by the Nazis should be returned to their rightful owners. And yet the Red Army and the Soviet state continues to hold uh, these archives. Contrast that to the fact that certain Russian archives, chiefly the Sm Smolensk archive, fell into uh, American hands, I believe, after being uh, um, uh, captured by the Nazis. Um, it took us a while, but in 2002, we returned these documents to the Russian state. Uh, it is uh, uh, disappointing that this unilateral concession, this return of important papers, was not matched by the return of the Shearson documents to the Chabad movement. Now, it is said that Jackson Vanek has achieved its purpose. Jews are no longer being held hostage, but the sacred papers 
of the Chabad community are still held hostage. Tom Lantos, in April of 2007, declared that while he was chairman, um, Jackson Vanig would not be lifted unless the Shearson collection was returned to the Chabad movement. I cannot make that pledge quite as strong because I'm not chairman of the full committee. But I will pledge to work hard to make sure that Tom Lantos's pledge uh, remains viable. And that having returned the Smolensk archives, we should not uh, be, uh, we should not uh, be asked to sweep away Jackson Vanek until not only the people, but the sacred documents are also released. Uh, I Uh, Congresswoman uh, Diane Watson, but be Diane, before I, I recognize you, um, I, I just want to note for the record, uh, and I'm going to, and, and I know that uh, uh, Brad Sherman uh, possibly had a private conversation, and I'll let him uh, identify the conversation with Mr. Lantos, but I'd be remiss uh, not to note that on February 21st, 2007, uh, over Radio Free U Europe and Radio Liberty, uh, it was reported that uh, U.S. Congressman Tam, Tom Lantos has called for an end to a decades-old U.S. restriction on trade with Russia. Speaking in Moscow, Lantos called the 1974 jackson Vanek Amendment a relic of the Cold War and vowed to spare no effort in seeking its removal. So uh, we have a uh, somewhat of a disagreement, um, but I wanted to read that into the record. Um, and I now uh, call on uh, Congresswoman uh, Watson oh, for a uh, uh, yeah. request. Uh, yeah, I'll thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 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 Diane, Diane, if if I could just speak for uh, for one minute uh, before we won't recognize. You'll still have all the time you need. Yes. Sixty Brad. seconds in that one minute. Yes, <laughs> um, I have no doubt that uh, in February of 2007, Tom Lantos uh, wanted to see us repeal Jackson Vanek. He then met with people concerned about the Shearson collection in April 2007, and that's when uh, he uh, took the position that, of course, he'd like to see Jackson Vanek uh, uh, abolished, but only when these papers are turned over. I think uh, he uh, and I would have thought then that this would be a relatively simple matter. These papers are providing no uh, particular um, benefit uh, to Russia. It is like uh, the dog on top of the pile of hay um, chasing every other animal away. The dog is not going to eat the hay. He's just there because the cow wants it. Um, I also uh, would point out that if, uh, and I know the title of this hearing says that uh, maybe Jackson Vennick is a relic of history. Not all relics of history should be swept into the dustbin of history. Uh, the U.S. ownership of Alaska is a relic of the Lincoln administration. Um, I yield back. I, 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 thank, I thank the gentleman and, and uh, will uh, agree if he so chooses, uh, since the subcommittee on Europe would have jurisdiction, we'd be happy to call for a separate hearing on the Schneerson papers uh, at, in, uh, and, and accommodate uh, uh, your concerns. And having said that, let me now recognize the gentle lady from uh, California, Ms. W Mr. Sherman. Thank you. Uh, Dana, I'm sure if I go to Google, I'll see that picture. I'm also sure that if I was in China and I went on Google, I would not see that picture. <laughs> um, if we're in Russia, you would see it. Yeah. Yes, that... Uh, uh, Ambassador, you put forward an interesting legislative proposal. Um, I think it's sophisticated, except uh, in one aspect, 
where you talk about a resolution of disapproval. That's what Congress does when we want to give ourselves the illusion that we have some control while depriving ourselves of all control. A resolution of disapproval, even if it were passed by both houses of Congress, would probably be vetoed by the executive branch and then would be effective only if we overrid the veto in both houses of Congress. Um, I suggest instead uh, that you provide for expedited consideration of uh, final approval uh, or simply drop the measure altogether. Expedited approval uh, is when Congress really retains control and um, I would think resolution of disapproval is worse than nothing because it gives us the illusion. Uh, much has been said uh, about Tom Lantos. It is testimony to uh, his status that we are talking about his position. It seems clear that in February of 2007, he was for unconditional uh, removal of Jackson Vanek from Russia. But in April, and, and in my opening statement, I specifically said that it was in April of 2007 that uh, he conditioned that on one very modest condition, and that is uh, that the uh, Chabad papers, the uh, Shearson uh, papers, be turned over. And uh, I believe that that was his consistent position from April 2007 until his death uh, almost a year later. Um, Jackson Vanek was about Soviet Jews. Yes, it covered other groups as well, but it was always interpreted to be Soviet Jews. The people are free to leave Russia, but their sacred documents are still held hostage. Um, I should point out that Lubavitch, the town where the Chabad movement was based, and in fact, uh, uh, it is the Lubavitch rabbi that created these papers, is in the Smolensk region of Russia. And we turned over in 2002, coincidentally perhaps, the Smolensk archives that came into our possession during World War II. And it is regrettable that so Russian leaders at that time uh, having obtained uh, the archives that they had asked for, did not uh, return uh, to the rightful owner uh, the uh, uh, Rebbe's uh, papers. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Levin, the, um, the archives, half of the papers I'm talking about, were papers that Stalin allowed to be taken out of the Soviet Union. Or at least, I don't know if he was, I doubt he was personally involved, but a government under his control. And yet now, um, the current government of Russia refuses to allow these documents uh, to leave. Um, why? Any insight into uh, the, uh, uh, the Russian position other than, well, there are some Jews in the United States that want these papers, therefore they will not be turned over. Mr. Sherman, I can't speak for the Russian Federation, nor will I try. Um, you, but I think you can, know, can you mention any advantage or know. benefit that but, Russia obtains by holding these papers? No, uh, no, I can't. Are these a great tourist attraction? Are they uh, treated uh, with uh, as uh, as as important? Are thousands of Russians lining up each day to see these, the way that thousands of Americans uh, line up to see the Liberty Bell? You should know that uh, for the last 20 years, uh, on and off, uh, but mostly on, uh, NCSJ has worked with the uh, Chabad uh, leadership to try to move this issue forward. Mm -hmm. And we have been on record urging the Russian government to return the library or to work out some sort of arrangement that uh, satisfies both the Chabad and the, and, and, and the government. Um, it should also be noted that, uh, um, you know, that there is some controversy within the Chabad community themselves um, about where the library should reside. I leave that to Chabad uh, to, to deal with, but make no mistake that our position is very clear. This collection should be in the hands 
of the rightful owners, the Chabad community. And we continue to, uh, uh, to we, we will continue to uh, raise this issue at, at every opportunity. I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know, and I probably they, couldn't. They, there, have there are only uh, six minutes left, so I'll simply conclude with a comment on uh, Mr. Sater's comments, and that is, uh, I think that if Jackson Vanek is leverage, it should be only something. We should look to something commensurate and relevant. And I'm not sure that uh, in return for Jackson and Vanek uh, being uh, removed that the uh, people who dominate Russia are likely to take actions that actually imperil uh, their continued uh, governing of the state. Um, and we might want to look for something a, a little smaller uh, and more relevant to the original pur purposes of Jackson and Vanek. Um, uh, with that, I'll yield back.